Rosie Jones's Disability Comedy Extravaganza, a celebration of disability and comedy curated by Rosie Jones. Starring William Thompson, Sam Serrano, Sarah Mills, Don Biswas, Josh Pugh, and of course, Rosie Jones. I'm happy now. I've had a lag. <laughs> Woohoo! So this next half will be interesting. <laughs> I don't know at what point, but at some point, I will, I will break my neck. <laughs> it's a fucking disability extravagant and never thought about installing a fucking ram <laughs> Dave Fuck you! <laughs> They'll cut that out. <laughs> um, oh yeah, said before that I'm, I'm gay and I'm, I'm very gay. Very, very gay. <laughs> I like a boob. <laughs> 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 um, but it took me ages to come out as gay to myself because I thought, no, I'm not gay, no, I'm disabled. <laughs> <laughs> My thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take two boxes. <laughs> no. Takes me that long to take one. <laughs> <laughs> People say fucking stupid shit to me. And, uh, my favourite is, oh, you're gay. You don't look gay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but you expect me to walk into the co-op wearing a strap. <laughs> Poking the sausage rolls. <laughs> no! <laughs> Are you ready for your first act in the second half? So clap, whoop, holler for Willie and Thompson! Hello London, how are we doing? Very good, very good. I'm over here from Belfast. Uh, yeah, it's lovely to be here. I'm aware my disability uh, isn't visible uh, straight away. I do know that. Um, sir, what's your name? Richard, what do you think my disability is? Get the... <laughs> no, no pressure at all, camera full on, Richard. <laughs> no idea. No idea, good man. No, I have, I have cerebral palsy, Richard. That, that's my uh, disability. In Belfast, they're a lot harsher crowd because Richard was very awkward there. He's like, oh, I don't want to say. I did that in Belfast two weeks ago. 
I came out and went, well, guys, what do you think my disability is? Guy in the front row, straight away, Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't blame people for not knowing what my disability is or knowing that I'm disabled. I didn't know I was disabled until I was 13. My parents never told me. They were just like, oh, give this kid a ball and watch him kick it. This will be funny, right? <laughs> Genuinely, right? <laughs> and then I was... And then I was going to big school. I was going to secondary school. And they were like, oh, we need to tell him. He can't go thinking that he's not disabled. Like, I still believed in Santa. Same energy. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I came downstairs on my 13th birthday, and my parents handed me a letter explaining I was disabled. Right. It was like a depressing Harry Potter. <laughs> But I didn't get a wand and an owl. I got a reel to help me out of the fucking bath. <laughs> That's what I got. It's hard growing up where I grew up. I grew up the working class estate in Belfast, right? And all my dis when my cerebral palsy, all it really is, is when I'm tired, my muscles contract and I walk with a limp like that, right? That's what my disability is. But when you grow up on a working class estate in Belfast and you're walking with a limp, People do just assume your legs have been broken for stealing cars. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be walking home, carrying the shopping like this, and old ladies will walk past me, like, serves you right, you thieving wee bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get bait for nothing. Britain's a particularly difficult country to be disabled in, I would say, right? Because we're not a very sympathetic people. Our whole, uh, our whole nation is just like, oh, we all have our own problems. You deal with it, right? We don't really feel bad for each other. Like, you go to America, you say you're disabled, and they're like, oh my God, you're disabled? I had no idea. I had no idea. You're wonderful. <laughs> you are brave. You're not disabled. You're differently abled. <laughs> Okay, you can do anything that you want to do, and I'm rooting for you, slugger. Go get him! <laughs> and you come back to sunny Britain, right? <laughs> and you say to someone you're disabled, and the only response you'll get is, disabled, I. <laughs> get a wee bit of money for that, do you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm disabled too, mate, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Ireland's not a bad place to be disabled because we have a unique situation where as if your mobility is badly affected, you get a car. It's a really weird situation. It's like the government's going, sorry about the brain damage. There's a Vauxhall Astra. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I said this to one of my friends and he went, oh, you're so lucky. I wish I had cerebral palsy. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, sir? <laughs> he went, no, but like if I had a car like that, like I'd get a really nice girlfriend. I was like, so you're telling me, right, that you would take all the years of physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, all the years of medication, all the years of pain, the anxiety of being laughed at whenever you play sport, or when you try to do something your disability won't let you do, and you take all that on just so you could get a car? Then I saw what he was driving, and I thought, <laughs> I was like, cerebral palsy's fucking class. <laughs> I see your issue, sir. I wouldn't finger myself in that car. That's... <laughs> I'm single. I don't do well with dating. I, I'm, really, I'm really bad at being single because I'm not good at like one night stands. And the reason for that being is I'm not good at the dirty talk. You into it, Richard, yourself? <laughs> yeah. You like a bit of dirty talk? Good mom, good mom, Richard. <laughs> You considered that for a second and I went, you know what? I up there, I up there, up there. <laughs> and I only found out I was bad at dirty talk recently, right? Because I went on a Tinder date and we went back to this girl's house and we ended up, you know, fully shagging, right? <laughs> and she was on top because uh, I'm a gentleman and I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> she was like, get on top. I'm like, I can't, they'll take my car. Don't like just. <laughs> And she said during that, the dirtiest thing that I've ever heard said to me, right? And I apologize for this, Richard. But she, <laughs> during sexual intercourse, she looked me in the eyes and she did this. She went, William, 
I want you to fill me up. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Fill me up. I didn't know if she wanted spunk or a tenor of unleaded. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, Willie Thompson, thank you. say what that's on tonight but uh, I'm the only one that's also a gay child <laughs> it's nice to be here a lot of people do assume I'm gay but I'm not don't worry if you assume I'm gay assuming I'm gay is not homophobic it's a fucking educated guess at this point <laughs> but I was talking to a girl at the bar the other day and she went you know Sam if you went gay I'd probably date you and I went I'm not gay <laughs> and she had a panic attack <laughs> um, but I'm, uh, no, I'm bisexual, which is from bisexual, and I've got an eating disorder, which is mental, because we're meant to be greedy, so what the fuck happened there? But <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, I didn't know bisexuality was like a thing. So I was about seven or eight at some attracted to men that was like, ah, oh, I'm gay, sorted. <laughs> then I was about 15, 16 at some attracted to women that was like, ah, oh, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and 15 year old me concluded that I was gay and just not very good at it. <laughs> like, just not committed to cock, that was the problem. I, um, I came out to my nan and then a couple of months later I had to come back in again, which was fun. <laughs> I said to her, I went, Nana, I've got something to tell you. She went, you've got a girlfriend. I said, not quite. I went, Nana, I don't like women. And she went, what, you're a misogynist. So <laughs> she still doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Whenever I tell people about coming out, they always go, oh, you're so brave. You're coming out so brave. Coming out to my family was fine. They're very accepting people. You know, like coming out to my family is probably the least brave thing I've ever had to do. Like, I've tried to pay for a bus ticket with a 20 pound note. That was fucking brave. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I've, I've, got, um, I've got learning difficulties. I've got something called Kabuki syndrome, which is kind of like autism. Um, I, was, uh, I was tested for autism when I was very young, and a medical professional told me that I wasn't autistic enough to be on the spectrum. Um, and six-year-old me went, well, technically, everyone is somewhere on the spectrum because the spectrum goes from 0% autistic to 100% autistic. So everyone is somewhere on the spectrum, given the nature of a spectrum. Um, and they tested me again after I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, people, when you got learning difficulties, people say stupid stuff to you. Now, my mum's the worst for this. She always goes, Ah, oh, you know, Sam, I wouldn't want you any other way. Which is fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit because that makes it sound like she wanted me to be disabled. <laughs> You know, like when she was pregnant and people were going, do you want a boy or a girl? She was like, oh, I don't mind as long as it's got no social skills whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and teachers do it to me too. They go, oh, you know, Sam, just because you've got learning difficulties, it doesn't mean you can't do what other people can do, which is exactly what it means. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm not retarded, you know, <laughs> well, technically. But <laughs> a lot of people don't like that joke. Um, I had someone come over to me after a gig once, and they went, you were disgusting. I went, excuse me? She went, you were vile on that stage, pretending you've got learning difficulties. I went, oh, I'm not pretending. I've got something called Kabuki syndrome. It's a bit like autism. And she went, no, no, no. 
I know you don't have learning difficulties. It's like, you're not my fucking doctor. How do you know? <laughs> she went, I know you don't have learning difficulties because I've just seen you talk for 20 minutes. So you're not properly disabled, are you? Which I know, like, sounds horrible. Um, but I think it's the most supportive thing my mum's ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've been really nice. Thank you very much for having me. I'll see you later. Thank you. Myself, um, I'm four foot eleven tall, right? I'm a short ass. Uh, all of me are short, not just my ass. <laughs> you know, a mermaid <laughs> is half human, half fish. A centaur is half human, half horse. And I <laughs> am half human. <laughs> <laughs> just half a human. That's not actually my disability. I, I know that that doesn't qualify me as being disabled. Uh, we're going to get to my disability later. Um, but you know what? Like, it does have pros and cons being this short, right? Like. The downsides are that drunk people tend to use my head as if it's an armrest. <laughs> and, and my last boyfriend, right, he was so tall that when he leant in to kiss me, it was kind of like I was a baby bird being fed by his mother. Like... <laughs> but on the plus side, there are certain breeds of dog that I can ride as if they are a pony. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I'm also single. Um, still not my disability. <laughs> but it feels like it sometimes. Uh, give me a cheer if you're single. <laughs> yes, single people unite. Except we don't. That's how we stay single. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, a few years ago, um, everything sort of changed for me. I ended up, I ended up in hospital actually. Um, I'd been having some like bowel problems, and I needed to go into hospital um, to have like a big operation. And that's how I uh, became disabled, um, because what happened there was that I ended up with a stoma bag. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with a stoma bag, that's fine. We're going to talk it over. Um, another word for it is a colostomy bag. Basically, right? I needed to have a little bit of my um, colon removed. Uh, so what happened was. Um, Sometimes if they can't like reconnect it after they've taken out a bit of colon, they have to like reroute it out the front, <laughs> like a motorway bypass. <laughs> so I've got like a little bit of intestine that like pokes out the front. I look like a broken whack-a-mole. <laughs> and I, I, I collect poo in a bag now here, um, which is ironic because I used to love those TV shows that would advise against the perils of hoarding. <laughs> 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 but I, like, I know it sounds really daunting, um, you know, to be told if you're, you know, a young single lady being told that you're having to have a bag, which I did. I definitely had to have it like it was a life saving operation. But I it, and honestly, I, like, I'm going to be totally honest. It was really hard. It was like something that I really had to like, spend some time processing. But actually, some parts of having a bag have really improved my life, right? Like, for example, like, I'm quite worried about the climate. Like, so I'm quite glad I pat myself on the back that I don't need to use loo roll anymore. <laughs> you know, like, you know, last, like during the pandemic, when you guys were all fighting over toilet paper in the frozen aisle of Aldi's, like, I was sat home <laughs> sipping a chilled martini with a bum hole that had been clean for two years. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I was living my best life. <laughs> And also, right, it's a great time saver, right? Because basically, like, I don't need to go to the toilet to poo anymore. That, that's what I'm saying, right? Because it's always just going on in the background like a computer update. Um, so, <laughs> so, like, I can be, you know, <laughs> doing my ironing and having a poo. <laughs> like, I can be, like, doing my tax return and having a poo. <laughs> Like, they say that women are great multitaskers. I'm the best. <laughs> like, I'm having a poo right now. <laughs> Thanks so much, you guys. I've been Ceremals. You've been lovely. Please. <laughs> <laughs>
Hallå? Klart, hallå? Are you doing any well? Yeah. It's good to hear. Uh, I'm Don. I I'm from Wimbledon, which is the home of tennis. Also true about me is I have a learning difficulty called dyspraxia, which among other things affects my coordination. Therefore, I am terrible at sports. So as you can imagine growing up in Wimbledon, in the mid 90s in the home of tennis, and having coordination difficulties. Do you know what that made me? British number three. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the pandemic still. I was prepared than most, because I live with my overbearing Indian mother. So I've been in lockdown for 39 bleeding years. <laughs> Just laugh at my pain. <laughs> I, I am a left-wing socialist comedian also. But I do corporate gigs because I'm broke and I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I did a corporate gig for IKEA and purposely missed out some of the punchlines to the jokes just to see how they'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> My comedy is also about celebrating diversity and I think we should celebrate it wherever we can, whether it's Black History Month, Dyspraxia Awareness Week or even National ADHD Minute. <laughs> One box I tick is uh, I'm slightly autistic, which makes me do awkward, embarrassing stuff all the time. Do you want to hear about the most embarrassing thing I've ever done? Yeah. Here we go. I'm not proud of this, but here we go. Last week, I was caught masturbating at the airport, <laughs> to which the security guard came up to me and said, what do you think you're doing? To which I replied, I'm making sure I don't carry liquids over 100 mils. <laughs> Does anyone want to high-five me after that joke? <laughs> I, I wouldn't touch you, I wouldn't touch you. <laughs> <laughs> Generally a true story, several years ago, diagnosed with a mild form of Asperger's syndrome. If you don't know what it is, it's a form of autism where you have problems communicating with people. Basically, you can't read somebody else's body language. Now, I don't think I've got this Asperger's, I wouldn't be here today looking people in the eye trying to tell jokes. And anyway, one of the symptoms of Asperger's the doctor said I had was having one-sided conversations with other people. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Asperger's, that's a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think what happened several years ago when I got tested. My results got mixed up with someone who is genuinely autistic. <laughs> and now what's happened, I'll tell you what's happened. There's some kind of Rain Man-like figure out there on the circuit who's been told by a doctor he's a comedian. <laughs> uh, I haven't got Asperger's. My actual diagnosis was mild traits of Asperger's. So I'm not Rain Man, I'm all Drizzle Boy. <laughs> Which sounds like the worst grime artist ever. <laughs> Is it Stormzy? No, it's Drizzle Boy. <laughs> Austerity has affected me because of police cutbacks. As a brown guy living in London, I now have to stop and search myself. <laughs> I'm a political activist as well. At the start of the year, 80,000 NHS staff descended onto the streets of London to protest at the possibility of being sacked because they're unjabbed. No, I went to that event. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. It was just the quickest way I could see my local GP. <laughs> <laughs> What's my message? What I'm trying to say is thanks for coming out tonight because one of the only other few options you had was probably watching TV. Another day I was watching a program called When TV Goes Horribly Wrong on Channel 5 and it turns out it was just Channel 5. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done business. Thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>
so good. <laughs> Don't be shit. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Josh. Uh, no relation. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming. Uh, <laughs> so nice to be out. I, I was okay during lockdown, to tell you the truth. I, I'm, I'm quite lucky. Right? I'm, uh, I've got a dog. He's a good dog. He's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Don't judge. I walk him with my shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> but no trousers. Just how I do it. <laughs> He's a good dog, right? But bless him, he's scared of the hoover. My dog is scared of the hoover. Like, every time I get the hoover out, my dog panics. But I suppose it's understandable. Like, imagine it from his point of view. Like, to us as humans, we know it's a hoover, don't we? But to him, it's just a noisy robot that keeps attacking his owner's dick. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a Henry. I like the eye contact. What can I say? It's, it's powerful. How much? Straight to the mains. <laughs> Bagless. Both of us now, actually. Uh, that's, uh, that's not my disability, by the way. No, no scrotum. Imagine that. I, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm visually impaired. That's my thing. I've got... My, my eyes are fucked, to put it... Uh, but it's a hard thing to understand, because we know blindness, we know what that is, but partial sight, it's harder to understand. People try and relate to it. They're like, oh, you know, I'm blind without my glasses. It's not the same, is it? Because you can fix that. I'm blind without my glasses. That's like going to a bloke sleeping in a doorway and be like, yeah, I'm homeless without my house keys. <laughs> not, it's not really the same, is it? Do you know what I mean? So, so that, that's my thing, right? But that, that, that doesn't stop my wife diagnosing me with other conditions, <laughs> which she has no knowledge of whatsoever. Uh, today, she kept telling me, like, I've got ADHD. That's what she keeps saying. Just, you've got ADHD, you have. You've got... That's a very arrogant thing to tell somebody they've got, isn't it, ADHD? Like, break that down for a second. Like, you've told me a story. I've lost interest in that story. <laughs> <laughs> and your first thought is that I must have some kind of psychological disorder. <laughs> Like, can we maybe work on your storytelling skills <laughs> before we go to putting me on medication? Just as an idea, like, let's try that first. <laughs> I said that to her, big mistake, she not have said that, massive argument. Didn't even resolve it because I started watching YouTube videos halfway through it, so that's still going on. <laughs> so no, not being able to see great, it, it can kind of, I make mistakes around the house. The, the worst mistake I've ever made in our marriage, right? My, my wife's favorite dinner is beef stew in the slow cooker. That's her favorite dinner. Very exotic woman, beef stew in the slow cooker, right? One day, she puts this beef stew in the slow cooker. She goes out to work. She texts me at lunchtime saying, can't wait for this beef stew. Really looking forward to it. Gets in, five o'clock in the evening, rubbing her hands together. Can't wait for this beef stew. Been looking forward to it all day. What neither of us realized was that at about 12 o'clock that day, I'd accidentally unplugged the slow cooker so that I could plug in Alexa to ask how old Ronan Keating is. <laughs> She was, she was furious. She was like, what were you thinking? I was like, I don't know, late 30s, early 40s, I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's 46, I've got, got to tell people. <laughs> it, it's when I try and help. That's when things go wrong for me in my life. When I try and be a good person, it goes wrong. I was getting the train recently. I had to get the train from Coventry down to London. I was early, the train was early. I thought I'd get on it, right? There's one other guy on there. Now, this guy's blind. He's got no vision at all. Now, you'd think, what are the chances two people that can't see on the train together? But actually, we just if you can't see, you get to things early. That's just how it works, just a learning, right? And this guy, I go past him, he kind of sense me. He goes, mate, uh, I don't know where the toilet is. Can you show me where the toilet is? I don't know where to go. Like, yeah, sure, no problem. So he puts his hand on my shoulder. I walk him down to the toilet. It's one of those, you know, like the curvy, like, bread bin, like, blind date toilets. <laughs> you know the ones? I so I usher him inside. He immediately starts taking down his trousers and pants. Now, this guy's blind, so he doesn't stand up and piss. He sits down, it's easy for him. What he doesn't know is, though, the door hasn't closed behind him. 
Now, what can I do in that situation? I don't want to go in and press the button for him because I'll be trapped in there with him. <laughs> I don't want to walk off and leave him because he won't be able to get back to his seat. So I just have to stand there. People now start getting on the train. Now, bear in mind, they haven't seen the first bit. <laughs> they don't know that he can't see. To them, it looks like I'm watching a guy shit <laughs> and that he is completely fine with it. <laughs> Never help anybody. That's my message. Never help anybody. How, uh, how are you feeling about COVID? You feeling all right? With a minute to go, going into the COVID stuff, yeah. How are you feeling about COVID, all right? Yes, we don't care as much as we used to, do we? It reminds me, remember when uh, Big Brother moved on to Channel 5? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's still going on, but, nah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, uh, but, I, I kind of, uh, I kind of tapped out of the COVID data quite early doors. Like, I wanted to keep up with it. But the problem is, I'm in a WhatsApp group with blokes, right? And they do not behave properly in WhatsApp groups. During lockdown one, I get a graph sent to me. I thought, perfect. I can click on this graph. It will tell me everything I need to know about COVID, how to keep my family safe. Perfect. I click on it. I hear this noise. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Anyone even got with that? Why are we doing that to each other? Why would we do I feel like this is the first global disaster that's had pranks in it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I can't imagine the soldier back in World War I on the front line sending a telegram back to his childhood sweetheart back in England. She's on the front porch every day for six weeks waiting for the postman to arrive. Eventually, he cycles up the Leaf English Lane Hands over the telegram, she opens it, and it's that massive black guy with his cock out. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, fair play, did not see that one coming. Uh, that's my time, thank you very much, take care. Everyone.
TV show your shit out. <laughs> um, but honestly, it's been such a great night, and I, for one, am going to celebrate tonight by um, getting assholed. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you do too. Can we give it up one more time for the amazing comedian? <laughs> 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 and that's been Rosie Jones. But that. <laughs>